Hi, this is Ben. Let's have a brief discussion about acid-base physiology. Do you know the normal pH of blood? Right, it's about 7.4, and this is a number that's very carefully regulated by the body. The main buffering system in the blood uses bicarbonate and CO2. Any excess acid in the blood can combine with bicarb to produce CO2 and water, which keeps the pH relatively constant. In the same way, any excess base in the blood can be neutralized with a hydrogen ion, keeping the pH relatively constant. Even though there are a number of other buffers, this is the most important one. In metabolic acidosis, we know that the pH is decreased because this is an acidosis. Because it is metabolic, how will the bicarb level change? The bicarb level will be decreased in a metabolic acidosis. How can the respiratory system compensate for this pH change? Well, to counter the metabolic acidosis, our bodies attempt to induce respiratory alkalosis by hyperventilating. We blow off as much CO2 as we can so that we can try to normalize our blood pH. In metabolic alkalosis, we know that the pH will be increased. Because it is metabolic, this means the bicarb will also be increased. Therefore, what will happen to the pCO2? It will be increased due to compensatory hypoventilation. This is also what happens after we eat a big meal. When the gastric parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid into the stomach to begin the digestion of food, they also secrete bicarb ions across the basal lateral membranes into the blood, causing a slight elevation in total blood pH. In order to compensate for this alkalosis, we start hypoventilating in an effort to retain as much CO2 as possible. In layman's terms, this is what's called a food coma. This term isn't all that high yield, nor will you see it on your board exam, but hey, now you know the physiology behind it. In respiratory acidosis, the pH will be decreased. What will this do to the pCO2? Well, the pCO2 will be increased because the higher concentration of carbon dioxide is producing acid in the blood. Can you think of one clinical situation they may present as a respiratory acidosis? Well, opiate overdose, i.e. heroin, can cause a respiratory acidosis secondary to respiratory depression. The patient slows the respiratory rate, leading to CO2 buildup and subsequent acidosis. How do you think the kidneys will respond? Well, they will increase their bicarb production. And do you remember the name of the enzyme that turns CO2 into an acid? Right, that's carbonic anhydrase. Moving on, in respiratory alkalosis, the pH will be increased. What will this do to the bicarb? First, we have to understand that the pCO2 will be decreased, and this is because excess amounts of CO2 would have to be blown off in order to cause an alkalosis. Therefore, the kidneys would respond by decreasing bicarb production, so bicarb concentration will also be decreased. Can you think of a commonly tested medication toxicity that might predispose someone to respiratory alkalosis? Correct, salicylate overdose. Now for the exam, you should be familiar with the concept behind the Henderson-Hesselbach equation. This equation relates the concentrations of bicarb, carbonic acid, and carbon dioxide all to the pH. I like to think of it very simply as higher bicarb will increase the pH by binding to hydrogen ions, and higher CO2 will decrease the pH because the carbon dioxide forms hydrogen ions. You might say, hey, doesn't carbon dioxide also form bicarb? Well, yes it does, but remember that pH is a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration and not bicarb concentration. So now let's look at some terminology. Something ending in osis refers to a process that tends to shift the pH in a certain direction. For example, an acidosis is any process that tends to make the pH lower, and an alkalosis is any process that tends to make the pH higher. However, those words don't directly refer to the pH of the blood, since there can be multiple such processes that exist at any point in time. In other words, just because you know someone has an acidotic process occurring doesn't mean that they have an acidemia. Another useful distinction is metabolic versus respiratory. Respiratory processes are those that are caused by changes in CO2 ventilation, whereas metabolic processes involve changes that are independent of the lungs. So before we go through the specific causes of the acidoses and alkaloses, 
Remember that a metabolic acidosis has a low bicarb as the primary disturbance, and this causes what respiratory change? Right, hyperventilation to get rid of CO2 as compensation. The reverse of this is a metabolic alkalosis that has high bicarb as the primary disturbance, and this causes hypoventilation to hold on to CO2 as a compensation. For the respiratory conditions, the compensatory responses happen in the kidney, which can increase or decrease the amount of bicarb that is reabsorbed. One important point is that metabolic compensation in this way takes 24 to 48 hours, whereas respiratory compensation by a change in breathing can happen immediately. Here's one more shortcut you can use to identify whether a disturbance is primarily respiratory or metabolic. If the pH and pCO2 are moving in the same direction, then the primary disturbance is metabolic. However, if the pH and CO2 are moving in opposite directions, then the primary disturbance is respiratory. This works whenever there is only one primary process occurring. Thanks for listening.